let's talk about multiplying with radicals. In order to multiply with radicals, all that matters is having the same index. The radicands can be different as long as the indices are the same, then we can multiply. For instance, the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, since they are both square roots, we can multiply to make the square root of 6. Likewise, with the cube root of 3 and the cube root of 2, since they are both cube roots, we can multiply to make the cube root of 6. But if our indices are different, cube root of 3 and square root of 2, we cannot do any more to this. In order to multiply, we must have the same index on each radical that we're multiplying together. Sometimes multiplying results in a product that will break down. For instance, square root of 2 times square root of 6, we can multiply these because they are both square roots, and that gives us the square root of 12. But square root of 12 can be simplified as square root of 4 times square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. We can't do anything with the square root of 3, so let's bring it down, and our product is 2 square root of 3. Same thing with this one cube root of 2 times cube root of 4, since they are both cube roots, we can multiply these to make the cube root of 8. Notice that the cube root of 8 simplifies to be just 2. Notice what happens if you multiply exactly the same square root times itself. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 gives us square root of 25, which can simplify to being just 5. Square root of 6 times square root of 6 is square root of 36, which can simplify to be just 6. In each case, notice that our ultimate answer was the radicand for the things we were multiplying together. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 ended up just 5. Square root of 6 times square root of 6 ended up just 6. So whatever the radicand is, that's going to end up our answer if we multiply exactly the same square root times itself. Because this is going to happen, we can jump over this step and we can just give our radicand as the answer. So square root of 7 times square root of 7, that's just going to be 7. With multiplication, we can distribute with radicals if we want. The square root of 3 times square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Notice that since these radicals are not exactly the same, they cannot be added. But what we can do is to distribute into the parentheses. Square root of 3 times square root of 2, since they are both the same, gives us the square root of 6. And square root of 3 times square root of 3, since they are exactly the same radicals, our radicand is our result, and that's just plus 3. These things do not combine, and so here is our product. We could also fall with binomials. If we have two binomials that we're multiplying together, let's take the first thing here, square root of 5, times the first thing here, square root of 2, and that gives us square root of 10. Let's do the outside. Square root of 5 times minus square root of 7 gives us minus the square root of 35. One negative gave us a negative result. Let's do the inside things. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 gives us square root of 6. And then let's do the last. Square root of 3 times minus square root of 7. Again, with one negative, it gives me a negative result. And square root of 3 times square root of 7 is square root of 21. None of these will break down. They are different radicands for each thing, so we cannot combine them, and this is our final answer. One more thing that's important for us to know, notice what happens if we multiply a sum times a difference with radicals. These are called conjugates or conjugate pairs. If we have exactly the same stuff in each set of parentheses, only in one place they're added and in the other place they're subtracted, those are conjugates to each other. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5, since they're exactly the same, 
gives me just the radicand, gives me five. Since I have a sometimes a difference here with these conjugates, there's no need to do the outside and the inside. We can go straight to multiplying the last things together. Square root of two times minus square root of two, since it's a positive times a negative, we'll get a negative result, and square root of two times itself gives us just two. Now five minus two gives me three as a result. When we multiply conjugates together, the radicals will go away. So anytime that we need to eliminate the radicals from something, we can multiply by a conjugate in order to make the radicals go away. For us to be able to multiply with radicals, we must have exactly the same index. If we multiply exactly the same radical times itself, the radicand is the result, and multiplying conjugates together makes radicals go away.